Imagine looking into your family member's story only to discover a crime ring so big you just had to write about it. She's a true crime author, but her first book focuses on a well-researched and documented piece of a family history, her cousin, Bob Leach. If you didn't know, Leach was a cattle rustler turned con man who was the leader of the Grayson County Five in Texas. Pepper Ann wrote The Notorious Texas Swindler about his life. She has protected her identity in the past because there were some people not too happy that she published this story, warning her to stop or attempting to steal the biography for themselves. Pepper Ann has worked with private investigators, which help flush her narratives with detailed excellence. Please welcome Pepper Ann. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here today. Did it scare you to start this book? No, it didn't. And I'll tell you why. Because I wanted to expose people who had been hiding for years behind the crimes that they'd committed. It didn't scare me at all. No, I was ready to bring them out. And so was my family. <laughs> How did the knowledge of this story and this person affect your family life? I think it affected my family life because we were always watching to see what I was exposing is so, what, what I am exposing is so big that it could bring several individuals down and it could ruin their reputation. It changed mine and my family members' lives because what I was doing went from being safe to unsafe. I constantly having to watch what was going on around us more so than I had been before. But I kept going. I didn't want to stop. To me, it just wasn't worth stopping. I was so angry at what I had If it's the last thing I do, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to expose them. Where did you find the emotional support as people were telling you not to do this project? My family, my friends, strangers, people that would hear the story. They would hear what I was doing, even in the grocery store. <laughs> I'd go into the grocery store a couple of times. And I'd get so frustrated and I'd just start talking to some random person. And they went in there just to get groceries, not to hear a story. And by the time I was done, the individual I was talking to standing in line and the person at the checkout and the bagger, they were all saying, you've got this, keep going, you can do it. I got so much support from so many random people. My editor, <laughs> my assistant, the people that didn't want the story out there were the ones that did the wrong and everybody else that was learning about it, they wanted it out there. So let's get into it. What was your relationship with Bob Leach and did you know him well? Well, I had never heard of Bob Leach until the passing of my grandfather. My grandpa Riley passed away in 2006. And I heard the story about us being related to a cattle wrestler. So once I read the articles online about the Grayson County jail escape in Sherman, Texas, and I talked to Sam, several family members and a lot of family on this side did not really know Bob. They didn't know the story. So I reached out to him. He's incarcerated. He's serving 14 life sentences in prison here in Texas. I wrote a letter and I said, you and I are related. Our grandpas are brothers. My mom and your dad are first cousins. And that makes you and I cousins. So I reached out to him and I told him who I was, what I wanted to do. I wanted to write the story. And then it was probably within just a matter of weeks he responded. He wanted to verify that I am who, you know, 
who I say I am, which I completely understand that. And then once he added me to his visiting list and I started going in, then I started working on the story and he and I became very close. Like you just imagine being in the penitentiary and finding out about family you didn't know about. And then the family member that reaches out to you wants to tell your story and expose others. And that's all he's wanted. He's wanted others to know that he's not the only one involved. And so for him, it was probably relief because he hadn't had a chance to tell his story. And I was that chance for him. So we became very close as family members do, you know. So he took the rap for the entire group. Mm-hmm. He sure did. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. So was he always into this life of crime or is this just like a one-off? Yes, he's always been in this life of crime. <laughs> so I understand why I didn't know about him before because it was two different worlds. I have other family members who ask me, who is this? What did he do? What was he involved in? And then we talk about it and they say, well, I understand why we didn't know about him because he was just in a whole other world. He was that dirty us. little secret, family secret. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yet it's such a public story. How can it even be a secret? <laughs> Not a secret anymore. <laughs> but even, even so, it was in the newspapers. I mean, for researching this, I just had to Google him and there he was. <laughs> He's all over the place. Oh my God. I don't know how I missed it or any of our other family members. Yeah, my mom and everyone in her generation knew about Bob Harold. But all of my generation, my first and second cousins, the younger generations, we didn't know about it. I don't know. I guess it was kind of a well kept secret. <laughs> but he started crime, the life of crime, when he was in his teens. His dad got him in into it he was probably about 15 years old when he started stealing cattle medicine from a ranch where his father had worked and as he'd fallen in suit like his father he didn't have a good rearing his Mm. parents just did not I mean that he lived such a different life compared to the rest of us and I hear family members, my mom was talking about him last weekend, and she said, I just hate that he didn't have that rearing that the rest of us had, but that's what happened, you know? Cattle rustling seems like a total Texas thing, too. It sounds like a classic cowboy movie. (laughs) Outline that story for us of, of how of the book and of this moment in his life? Well, basically what happened was he got involved with a Texas state trooper in the 80s. And Bob was in his teens, his late teens, probably 19, 20 years old. And the DPS state trooper coaxed him into doing the cattle wrestling. He'd already committed crimes of stealing (laughs) cattle medicine so what's one more step for him right I mean in his mind that's what he was thinking he and the DPS state trooper started wrestling cattle and the reason the trooper reached out to Bob is because Bob had been around this lifestyle around ranching and farming he knew about cattle he was one of the best I've had people tell me that he knows all about the cattle the ranching lifestyle he learned at a young age So he fell into that with the DPS state trooper. He tried to get out of it, but he couldn't because he was in so deep, you know, that eventually ended, but not before the trooper had threatened to have Bob killed if he didn't lie on the stand saying, hey, if you don't lie about me being involved here, I'm going to have you killed. I have that recorded conversation. I include that in the book, but the individuals who paid Bob's bonds when he was involved with the trooper are the individuals that I'm actually exposing. When Bob got tied up with those individuals, that's when he started wrestling more cattle and doing more crimes, committing more crimes than anything he'd ever done with a trooper. 
Mm. At that time, he met, married his then wife when he was incarcerated because he ended up going to prison for the crimes he'd committed. Once he got out on parole, he and his wife fell into that lifestyle even heavier. <laughs> they wrestled millions of dollars worth of cattle. She was setting up extramarital affairs for Bob to have with women and they were taking money from the women that Bob was having the affairs with. She was actually overseeing a party ranch that the two of them had, inviting guests to come out and enjoy the ranch cell amenities. And then she'd catch them in uncompromising positions, take pictures of them and then blackmail them. So a so new she was kind of take on a bunny ranch called the cattle ranch. <laughs> That's right. She was overseeing the whole thing. You know what I mean? Bob was involved, but she was the one overseeing all this. So they were making money hand over fist. The cattle that was stolen, they were also answering ads in cattlemen's magazines and newspapers for ranchers who were looking for a place to pasture their cattle. They were answering the ads, telling them, come on, bring your cattle here to Texas. I've got a spot for it. Well, because Bob had a record, he's a felon, an ex-felon, he couldn't go to a bank and get a loan. He just couldn't. But she could. So they would go to the banks and she would get loans on the cattle. The bankers would give her money. Bob and his wife, Tammy, would turn around and they would take the cattle and they would sell them at the auction barns, the sell barns, and get money. <laughs> And then it just kept going. It just kept going from there. They kept getting more cattle, they kept rustling cattle, anything they could do, they did. Mm -hmm. It finally came to an end when one of Bob's girlfriends that his wife, Tammy, had set up for him blew the whistle. He went on the run and she turned herself in to a DPS state trooper, or excuse me, to a Texas Ranger. And then Bob ended up in a jail, Grayson County. He and four other fugitives went on the run. Law enforcement was looking for him for four days and they found him. They found Bob and another few, one of the other fugitives holding a married couple hostage in their home in North Texas. And they were involved in an eight hour shootout against law enforcement. <laughs> so he's been in this criminal lifestyle since he was a teenager. And that's all he knows. It's a shame. And it took you a while to write this story and... How did it feel when you finally got it out there? I think that it was emotional for me because it took me 12 years. Mm -hmm. I had to rewrite it so many times. And my family, when I told them, I said, I'm done. I've got it. I'm sending it. I sent it to my assistant. She helped me get it to print. And there was a huge party. There was a huge party. Right Everybody was so thrilled. They couldn't believe it. I felt relieved and I felt like, okay, people are going to hear this and it's time. My next question after that was, is it going to make a difference? Are people going to listen? And that's well, gee, what I'm waiting. It's quite a story. And if people are listening, you kind of captivated a lot of them worldwide, too, because isn't it being translated into a few languages? And so you had literary agents turn this story down. And do you think that was out of fear? And I wonder how they feel now. <laughs> I will say this, the literary agents that I contacted, they were amazing with me. So you know how usually if they're not interested in a story, they, most of them don't respond. A lot of them responded and they said, keep going. You've got to find the place for this story. They were encouraging to me if they regret it now, maybe they do, maybe they don't, but it wasn't for them yeah. you know and they knew that because it's a regional story and somehow those individuals turning my story down it just gave me more confidence to keep pushing to find it so I'm thankful to every one of those literary agents that turned it down I mean they were amazing with me I don't have one bad thing to say about them because Hey, it wasn't for them, right? Yeah. I mean, 
you've got to respect somebody that can be open and honest with you about it. Yeah. So tell us about the topics of some of your other stories. Well, this is my first book. This is my first one. I am working on another book that I'm taking my time with. It is true crime. And as far as the topics go, I can assure you they're safe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anybody looking for me because the people that I'm writing about are not looking to get even or coming at me. But <laughs> I hope my next story will, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to top the first one, right? I mean, you're always looking. Well, you got to keep on going. Yeah. Yeah. And I will. Now, now you're a writer. So you got to write. I thank you. Yeah. I am. And I keep pushing forward with it, but yeah, I'm excited. My next story. So <laughs> I've had a lot of people, it's a local story where I'm at here in Texas and I've had people come at me and say, you know, Hey, this might be something of interest to you. It's a case that's been solved, but there is a lot of the story people don't know about. And so that's what I want to bring out when in my writing and anything I do, I want to tell the side that other people have not heard yet. So and soon that's... to be heard on 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they want me on 48 hours. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> How have you changed since writing this book? You know, to be honest with you, I have changed, but in a very good way. I used to always be quiet. I kind of listened to others. Now I have formed my own opinions about life. I'm not judgmental. I've never been judgmental to people. I'm very open to what's going on around me in the world. But I'm more protective of my loved ones. I don't share everything going on in my world with everyone in the world you know being from Texas we're real friendly like I said go into a grocery store you start talking to somebody I don't do that as much as I did before mm. I'm more observed I'm friendly and I'm kind to people but I'm not going to be the first one to volunteer information. And I used to be all the time. I'm more aware of what's going on in the world. I didn't realize that this was going on. I'd always kind of led a sheltered life. And now that I've been exposed to this type of world, I'm a little more careful, a little mm. more guarded. What is the best compliment you've ever received as a writer? You know what? I have received this compliment from so many people. As a writer, we love for people to go online and to rate us, review, you know, leave a review. But I have people who, after they read my book, they email me and they all say this along the same lines. They all say, I had to reread several sections to make sure what I read is really what I read. When is your next one coming out? You're my favorite author. What a compliment. Oh, wow. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people have, have emailed me. And my assistant is just floored when that happens. She's just, it's, it's amazing. That's the best compliment I've received. When is your next one coming out? You're my favorite author. <laughs> oh, that is so amazing. I love that. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I had a great time.